Thinking it's legit, sitting on the couch at the crib, trying to persist when I'm gonna print it up in this lit. Deals on the microphone and hip to the rip, even if I'm gonna skip to my lip. What does that mean? Put the dip in the lip. Deals on the microphone and when I'm dipping your chick. It's kinda like a dance move, but I'm hipping the if. Huh, wait, how I put it together like a syllable with a bull in my shit. Damn. Deals on the microphone, I'm riding nice Even if I'm in the middle of the day, I'm riding bikes Like, hey, yo, Socrates the Plato oh, What's up, man? Uh, my name is Rami Matan Evanesh I perform under the name Kosha Deals A rapper, street artist, uh, billboard charting artist uh, Rapper on Wild and Out All around a dope MC that just makes crazy videos And has been in the game a long time my family is Israeli, so I came more from an immigrant side. I mean, I think there's definitely the American Jewish uh, experience. And I came from, I was the first one born in America in my entire family. My brothers are born overseas. In our, my neighborhood, there were no other Jewish families. In many other Jewish neighborhoods, there's a lot of Jewish families, not where I live. So I think, you know, I was in a school where there wasn't a lot of Jewish kids. There was more immigrant kids, Pakistani, Indian, Puerto Rican, Dominican. Being a Jew, Jewish, Judaism is the religion. Um, the culture is like, I don't have to go to a synagogue, I don't have to do anything, I'm still Jew because my mother's a Jew, and her mother's a Jew, and her mother's a Jew. Food, there's culture that comes with it. There's no food culture that comes with Catholicism. There's no food and culture that kind of comes with Christianity. There's halal food, right? For, for for Muslims to, that they, they should be eating. And there's kosher food, and kosher food, you know, it's like blessed in a certain way, so there's some religious aspect to it. But like, you eat bagels, bagels is like Jewish food, there's great in Poland, the Bialis that, um, that, you know, is that New York is known for. And then there's matzo ball soup, and you could get a cat's deli, and it's pastrami, and it's like sliced meat, it's kind of like Jewish, Jewish culture. I mean, there's people that living outside of Israel, um, there's about 15 million Jews, half of them are in America, about half. Then we say there's people in Canada, South America, Europe. Let's say like the ideas of, of, of Jews and, and money, like where does that come from? Um, well, people didn't know that, you know, Jews were able to do money lending because the other, I guess it was in Christianity and this, they, they weren't allowed to make money off each other. So Jews were able to lend the money. So this became the trope of like the banker, the Jew that's getting over on you. But the only reason why they did it is because there was no bat, it wasn't like illegal essentially, you know, I'm allowed to make money off you, mm -hmm. that, that there's no, there's no rule. That like transformed, okay, and we think of entertainment, capitalism, that Hollywood was born out of a necessity because no one wanted to do it because Jews weren't allowed into Broadway. Broadway was the big thing. Um, so they created something that really wasn't I mean, there was nothing there, right? I mean, no one thought the film would be big, mm -hmm. right? Um, so now, you know, there is a thing that the Jews run Hollywood. This is like a perspective. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, I just had a meeting with someone and it's like, you know, there's so much stuff. There's so much media not coming from Hollywood. Documentaries, and there was not a lot of Jewish people. And mm -hmm. even in Hollywood, does it mean that like 50 per, there's not 50% of people are all Jewish and they all make decisions? There's maybe a couple of people, you know, that make some decisions, and it doesn't mean that they're hiring all Jewish people, you know what I mean? They're, everyone's working together to make this project, you know? And now they're major corporations. It's not one person that happened to, to own all these things. But when it started, um, you know, some people were Jewish, you know? So. I think that's, I think that the people need to know the, how it was born. It was born actually from anti-Semitism, that's why I started it. I mean, well, most of my family was killed in the Holocaust. And my mother's father's side, his whole family was killed. He was one of the few people, he fought in the Polish army, then he escaped to Russia, then he fought in the Russian army, and he fought in the Israeli army. So, like, I mean, literally, and it's interesting, I always think of my grandfather recently, because when he passed away, he, you know, it's just funny because we talk about like Jews and banks, right? There was all this money buried in the floor of where he lived in Israel because he didn't trust banks. So, because he didn't trust banks, he put all this money in like, in like, you know, coffee cans and stuff like that. And they were just buried it and for, for people to find, like of our, our, our family. So I, I find it interesting how like, as much as um, there is like this distrust of 
Jewish people tied to banks that my grandfather also didn't, you know, my grandfather's Jewish, and he was, no one trusts banks. My aunt also, she like, they were they were all rounded up and they lived in Transylvania and uh, just toward the end of the war and she got rounded up as a kid and she thought she was like going on a trip. So a lot of the adults, you know, just told the kids that they were going on a trip. So like they weren't gonna get scared, you know what I'm saying? Because they were getting rounded up at the time. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, then the Nazis, you know, had lost a war and they were treated so they ended up going back home. And the crazy story is that the neighbor had already taken the tablecloths that they left them and used them and, and they're like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, because they didn't think they were coming back because they were about wow. to die. I've never had the experience of working with the label. I've been independent my whole career. So the interesting thing is anytime I've specifically been introduced to, to Jewish people in the music business, there's always a hesitation. I call it like the syndrome of like one person in the room. It's like, oh, the one Jewish guy in the room with all black people, or the one black guy with all the, in the room with all white people, or, you know, it's like someone, someone else shows up, and you're like, it's a weird tension, I don't know if you guys, have. and I, I was introduced to, like, Paul Rosenberg, and, you know, people that are in the game, and, like, I always thought that it's, it's, like, tr people that have dealt with trauma in their own personal lives that have to deal with it come together to make great stuff happen. Um, doesn't necessarily mean it always work out, but you know, the record label business, it seems to be like something that if you have a hit song and stuff, it seems to work in the beginning. And then now we're in a world where, you know, historically it's like you're making pennies off record, but if you're selling millions of record, then everyone, it, it all works out for everybody. But I mean, obviously it's historically it's worked, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, then jazz, I was just in New Orleans and there was a huge contingency of you know New Orleans players that work with Jewish people in New Orleans for jazz and it seems to have kept venues alive and everyone just keeps working together then I went as KD flow and I was doing battles and people knew me as KD and this is like 2000 to 2004 but I mean I was out in New York a lot at the time um, but then I put out a record as Kosha Dills and I liked it because Rami is also an Arabic name Rami is a Palestinian name Lebanese, Egyptian. I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do kosher dills. And I, I don't know, I just really wanted to do it and I liked how it was a little bit of shocking style to it. My MySpace page was like kosher dills in your mouth. Like mm -hmm. it was just, you know, it was obviously, it was a huge euphemism. It mm -hmm. was like a sexual reference, just rocking. And that, that was what time it was at that time in my life, you know? Battle rap, disrespectful. And obviously, you know, somewhat of a funny, funny twist to it. So as I started getting involved in more Jewish things, this people really liked the name. And then that sort of just attracted these new circles around me. And for me, I was coming out of jail and I was just getting sober at the time. This is like 2005, six. And I'm just like, this is crazy. I'm starting to make money rapping at synagogues and just like just these events. And I come from, you know, Pyramid Club and the New Eureka Poets Cafe and like, and, uh, you know, just the underground spot, CBGBs, you know, this is where I come rap, come, come from rapping. And now, you know, this, all these new names are coming in. in. I start rapping with bands, start rapping with Modest Yahoo. And that's it, you know. Then I started attracting rabbis and man, make a song in Hebrew and I'll make a song in the next thing you know, I'm making Hanukkah songs and just, just all this stuff, just things, that's what I'm doing. I'm just working as a rapper, making some bread and doing things that I feel like doing. And next thing you know, you know, something negative happens about with Jewish people and people start asking me questions. Now I'm getting media attention. I'm like, well, all right, I'm just saying yes. And, and next thing you know, all right, you know, I'm auditioning for Wild and Out, you know, and, and all right, you know, they don't even know what kosher is like in Atlanta. So I'm like, all right, well, let me just wear a yarmulke. Let, let, let me just really do it and just, because on a cultural level, I'm like, if I got some swag to it and just pizzazz, you know, and I was, a lot of my friends, the guy I was just talk, talking to that was doing the voice notes with my boy Eris, uh, H2 or D1, we are, we are, we were always like in these projects of like doing cool Jewish things, like 
because you can't like like religion isn't cool right off the bat it's not cool but there's jewish music and then there's christian music and you see like christian artists like lecrae trying to like swag out christianity and then there's kosher dills with the yamaka wild and out and then you know what i mean mm -hmm. so they got the jewish guy and then they got dc young fly and they got the Asian, you know what I'm saying? So again, like I got, you got one of this, you got one of these, you know what I mean? And I, I just became one of those, you know? Like, this is our special sauce right here. And I, I found myself in these, you know, little cubbies and, and, and cutty formality. I don't even know the word. Like, you know, that position in this one show where they need someone right here that there's diversity, inclusion, you know? It's almost like you have your own niche. In a I sense. definitely got my own niche. When I, I had done like a skid bit, so basically I was supposed to do like five years, I ended up doing like nine months, and then I got paroled off after that. So that, that like, there were people that would used to see uh, priests and like pastors and they would get out of the pot and I never wanted to work. I was just like, I'm not gonna work. I'm not working for like a, do a 10, 25 cents or some shit. So, so I was like, I demand to see a rabbi. I had never done anything Jewish, except go to Israel and just, just hang out with my family and stuff. And, um, you know, I had a bar mitzvah and that was it. I was like, I'm not doing 12 step. I was still getting high at the time. And, uh, that was like sort of my introduction more to doing anything Jewish. Um, cause I was encouraged by like this Christian dude that was like, you got to fast in Yom Kippur and all these things. And that sort of sparked me, you know, writing a little bit about writing a little bit about it. Um, and I wrote every single day. I'm supposed to release a book with all my letters and all the things that I wrote to my father, which I have saved in a giant soul team box, letters and journals, and, and it's all transcribed, sort of like that was the thing in, in me getting sober eventually. And then I got arrested again. I was set up in the sting operation and, and uh, I was running from the police. And then I had a large amount of drugs on me, which I got rid of somehow. And uh, it dropped in front of the school and it didn't turn up on a discovery. And I thought mm. like God came into my life and I got sober. So that was like 18 years ago, yeah. Wow. So yeah, 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 yeah. And I've been, yeah it's, been, it's been straight and narrow since, just rap. Rap is my drug. Popping off is more important to people than anything. I think, I feel like the, the colors and stuff, people drop down those barriers. Like I worked with RZA from Wu-Tang in 2000. I was in a BT cypher in 2012. So I was like working with, you know, ODB Sun and RZA. I can't do anything except be myself, and it's not my fault that I started making a career in rap. It's like I never had another job. I sold drugs, delivered pizza, worked at the rehab I went to, and sold cemetery plots door to door. I know how to sell T-shirts, and I could sell. I could rap on a street corner, like I've it, as character. So for me, I'm like already it's me against the world because I'm forced to just create and every day I wake up and I'm like, I just gotta get, I gotta get paid or else this, this don't exist. You know, no one in real life is coming up to me, which I would, would love it. If people were like, Hey, yo, I got something to say to you, but it's mostly online because people, regardless of color, race, creed, sexual orientation, no one, everyone's afraid to have real conversations. And I'm like, let's have them. But no one's, no one's ever like, yo, this is, this is my thought of you. But people, you know, keyboard warriors, they exist everywhere. Yeah. You know, so, right. so that's, so I, I like to just say that because when I was at the BET Awards, I was like, man, this is, this is dope. But everyone really in real life is excited because you're like, obviously you gotta be something special if you're like, the white dude at the, on the B, at the red carpet of the BET words. So right. you're like, you know, he doesn't look like me or who's the guy with the yarmulke. And like I said, I'm not that religious, but when it comes to big things, I like to like it's add it to my style as like, just part of my culture. And then you get on TV and you think everyone will hit you up because you're on TV, but people just watch TV and that's it. It doesn't connect because we're so used to connecting to social media. I just always got to make sure every day that I'm getting my shit off. And that, that is how I relate to hip hop. And it is super much of a struggle, but I, I do enjoy doing a lot of uh, like collaborative work in the black Jewish community and bringing people together. When anyone speaks in the form of they, 
then he's sort of you're grouping everyone together like i always say people imagine if if, if i was coming up in, in, in hip-hop and like well they you know at this bet right let's just say bet black entertainment television sure saying again you know coaches keep saying they and them what you know why is that like we we can't have that that can't go down you know and obviously i would get canceled pretty i would say quite immediately if i controlled the media trust me i wouldn't have people hating jews in the media it would make sure all that stuff would be out of it and there was just a numerous things that he said in fact during the drink champs stuff he i think he there were like 70 instances where he did things which was so much worse than what the next person did and, and, and like Kyrie or Dave or you know what what have you to the point where not only did Kanye also offend Jewish people disrespect Jewish people but he also did the same thing about George Floyd George Floyd's family said that he you know didn't die for, that didn't die from a knee on his neck so he also just spread Black, Black Lives Matter which is like hugely part to most of the people that listen to him I would say the majority of people that watch those interviews were at Black Lives Matter rallies in 2020 and 2021. So I thought, I was like, you know what? I'm going to say something and I'm going to put it out. And everyone, everyone's saying something, right, on the media. Everyone's saying something, but no one responded creatively at all. No one made a song. I made a song. No one who made a song, maybe some other people made a song, but no one made a video. No one made a full video with a red camera and flipped it in a day. And that's what I did. And I put it out there and I'm like, that's my response. Now you guys can comment everything because I made a song, I put it out, and now that song's in a documentary on Hulu, and that song really has really, you know, made a lot of waves, you know, and I'm proud that I did it, you know, and if I think back, I could have maybe said more direct things, but uh, that's what happens when you make a song and release a video in 24 hours. <laughs> everything that Kanye said could have been with someone he trusted in a private conversation and asking questions. Like, because as a person who has 50 million followers, I think he has 50 million on Instagram, there's only 15 million Jewish people in the world. So you have a specific, a, a, I was like, a civic duty, a, a responsibility, because you know how many, how crazy your fans are in a good way for you that support you, especially as tons of Jewish fans, including myself. I've been to Kanye shows. I went to Sunday service at Coachella, you know what I mean? Like I work with people that worked with Kanye, my producer who produced a song indirectly worked with Kanye before, my friends who wrote on albums. I recorded this song at a guy who had Donda literally as a Grammy on his wall, right? So one degree of separation. Point being, a lot of his grievances, he went on a show and said, I'm going to I'm going to uh, go Death Con 3, um, Jewish people control this, using the word Zionist, just like using, just everything was in a defamatory way. So, of course that's wrong. But it proves my point is that if I respond and people said Kanye was still right, et cetera, it just proves for me that I was like, man, I'm happy I made this song because I'm looking at the comment section. There was 10,000 comments, 3,000 here, 3,000 here, 2,000 here, 3,000 there. And most of them are either thank you for making this or conspiracy theories, etc. cetera. Um, and what Kanye said about being blacks being Jews is true because there were many people that lost their Jewish identity coming over in a transatlantic slave trade being sold to Christian slave owners. But it doesn't negate all the other things he said, which were basically conspiracy theories. Kyrie Irving, once again, Kyrie is so famous. He has a duty to understand that like anything he shares, especially as a professional sports player, no matter how much money you make a team, etc., you have to be very careful of what you share if you have a brand deal and you share the wrong thing, you're going to lose your brand deal. You know what I mean? I, I'm not a professional sports player. You know, I rap outside of <laughs> the sports game. I watched the movie. I rented the movie. All right. I paid for it just so I could, you know, be more prepared. I was like, what is this movie about? And the movie has a lot of facts, right? 
Jewish connection to Native Americans, um, Jewish connection to the black community, the Igbo community in Nigeria. Um, just a, outside of that, the movie's pretty badly done, just in general, it's really trash. Then it says the Holocaust was manipulation, Holocaust was fake, then it says all these Jews are fake. Um, then it has fake quotes, fake interviews from people that weren't around during the time it happened, which leads me to believe the stock footage they got from Sudan. How do I know if this was Sudan or maybe it was um, Zimbabwe? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, I don't know. To, there's just random pictures popping up when they're mentioning a country. So I don't know if those people are from those countries or not. When you go to Auschwitz, I've been to Auschwitz. I was just there this summer. There's literally every single name for one point over 1 million people, 1.1.2 million, which is, you know, that's just at that concentration camp. So they have all, they have it documented. Hmm. So if Kyrie was to share it, he should have mentioned, hey, I'm sharing this, but it's only because of this, but there's other bad things in it, just a precursor. That would have saved him a lot of drama, but he just shared it and then he had to go silent. I don't think they should have talked about with the money, the, all that stuff where they try to get somebody money and, and buck break them and give them a whole list of, of things to do to get back. That doesn't, one, it doesn't work, right? I think when you try to punish people, like detention or whatever, whatever, it never, it never works. And it's basically like white supremacy is enjoying splitting groups. And when you split groups up, then these other groups come in and then they say, yo, we'll keep funding you. And then you're like, oh, for, you know, well, you know, because they, they enjoy this and, and then everyone benefits because now media is watching your stuff go up and media is watching you go up and media is watching these guys go up. So now everyone's benefiting except the people that are suffering. To address it like we're on Wild and Out, like people laugh at you because you're Jewish and you laugh at other people because they're this or you're fat or they're skinny and people are going to attack stuff that's... <laughs> That's the obvious, mm -hmm. you know, and I spoke with someone once about this and they're like, could you make people laugh talking about the plants and the books? Do we always have to talk about the skin color or the religion or that? Because that's just, you know, it, it, as much as it is funny when it is, you know, real skill, real, real comedy, real rapper, we can make lyrics about anything. Right? And we don't always have to refer to the easy thing right in front of you. There's the thing about uh, anti Semitism and philo Semitism, where, uh, you know, you think having money maybe in one community is the best thing, right? Because maybe coming from a less financial, literate community at an early age and then realizing that it's negative for us. I talked about this with, with, uh, with uh, my homegirl Gangsta Boo, and she's like, well, having money is a great thing. And then you're like, no, well, this is the reason why it's bad. And they're like, oh, so we think it's philo So we're showing you love, and you're saying, no, you hate us. So it's like this miscommunication. Mm -hmm. And the cause of every relationship's demise is miscommunication. miscommunication. Two things could be right at the same time. Yes, people can be too sensitive, but I'm not, you know what I'm saying? I'm fine with certain things because I'll, I'll take all of it. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm on a show where people diss, diss, diss you, literally. I mean, like, and they'll say all those things. And there's probably going to be a whole new slew of Kanye and Kyrie Irving and <laughs> Dave Chappelle jokes when we do it again. You know, also just learning more about our own cultures. Because uh, there's, there's another expression that says there's two Jews, there's three different opinions. So every Jew, like, I can't tell you how many Jewish people were like, what you did was wrong. Um, you making that song mess things up like so you're pissing off your own people and that's what people don't want like I said earlier I mean it's true that there's that there's definitely fact that the people that came over from Africa to America they were people that were Jewish I'm not saying every single person was Jewish but my buddy Rudy Rockman he's actually Rudy underscore Israel on Instagram he's doing a uh, uh, a documentary on the Jews of Africa and there's like these Jewish communities in Africa and Nigeria and they're still getting persecuted to this day mm -hmm. Zimbabwe South Africa mm -hmm. um, all over and um, Ethiopia northern Africa two things could be true at once they could be Jewish but a big 
thing about them is that we're definitely not Jewish. Like anyone that's not them is not Jewish. They're fake. And they're from the synagogue of Satan. And, you know, that's like their perspective, um, which isn't true. You know what I mean? And my experiences of them screaming at us. And even my boy Nassim Black, who's a black Orthodox Jew, and you can see him. I did the Hanukkah song with him. Mm -hmm. And he's also in the documentary uh, on, on Hulu and ABC Nightline. Um, I'll call him a heathen, you know, and he gets a lot of, a lot of stuff for being, uh, essentially a fake Jew because him and Amari, you know, they converted. I went to rehab. Maybe other people turned to religion. People joined certain groups. I don't think people live completely normalized before they become very religious. I know my brother's very religious. <laughs> he had a crazy life before. I'm okay with speaking to anyone, honestly. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, and I have spoken to people because I've, I've been inundated with messages the past three weeks from it. I was like, I, you know why people don't like this community? It's because people hate black people all over the world since forever. And it'll continue just like people hate Jews forever. This is like, this is how people who hate, that's what they do. You know what I'm saying? It has really nothing to do whether whether they're Jewish. You know, it's colorism. Racism exists in every part of the world, and it's that's it. You know, it exists in Israel. It actually, honestly, probably exists worse outside of America than any than than here, and that's crazy <laughs> to say that. You know, because over there, they're honestly influenced by a lot of Western culture. So they what they hear here on television and music videos, they'll say over there. Um, some of the biggest rappers in Israel. Are Ethiopian Jews, mm -hmm. Teddy Nagusa, Adam Derso, um, Titi Anu, Miss Miss Israel, Ethiopian Jew, like Lily literally speaks and tells her story how she was like the tall girl in the village of Ethiopia, barefoot, and then like moved to Israel and had like a car, just like crazy shit. Or she, you know, her whole life was drastically changed. Doesn't mean there's not racism over there. Ethiopian Jews don't really understand it because this is like an American thing. They're like, I don't get these people are saying that they're Jews over here, but we're, you know, Beta Israel. And the one thing that the documentary does mention, it mentions that Ashkenazi Jews are fake, Mizrahi Jews are fake, Sephardic Jews are great, but it does acknowledge that Beta Israel, Ethiopian Jews are real. The headlines work a certain way and people post clips of it and say like, oh, what about this? Or what about the migrant situation in Israel? The people from Sudan, the racism over there. Racism exists, man. <laughs> Every, all, all over, you know what I mean? And I really think uh, uh, the only thing that could, you know, really help stop it, honestly, is more communication and people helping each other for the sake of helping each other. While well, I know it's epic, um, I auditioned. It took me many years to get an audition. Um, sent in a tape, did the, the tryouts in Atlanta, made the uh, first season, season 18. There's one other Israeli girl in there, Ormash, so it's cool, fun to speak Hebrew on set with her. And, and uh, do some Jewish culture stuff down there, like Shabbat, and, and they do prayers before each show, which is just sort of like a, like a Southern Church thing. As I talked to Carlos Miller from 85 South, who's like one of my favorite dudes there, he's like, what do you do when they all pray in the circle? I'm like, oh, you know, it's just kind of like, yeah. <laughs> it's just funny. You know, I hope for the best. I will, I'm happy for every. I hope everyone gets everything they pray for. You know, everyone comes together for the same goal in life, which is to make people laugh any way possible. Whether you're getting clowned or you're battling or you're beating somebody and, and uh, beating them, you know, lyrically, however that comes off and get to work with Charlie Clips, Hitman Holla, Conceited. I mean, these are like, you know, Justina. These people are extremely successful from Wild and Out and the whole world knows who they are. I mean, and I travel everywhere with that Wild and Out sweatshirt. And people are like, yo, man, you get to work with them? I got to do a show with Cat Williams, Michael Rapport, and that doesn't exist anywhere else in television anymore, where you're like, hey, you know what I'm saying? You could say something about you, and you could say something about me being Jewish, and I could say something about you being um, this, or fat, or and your job is really to offend people, yet be funny at the same time, and it's actually allowed on television. And this is like the last place where it's allowed, where it's not going to be um, at least it's tele, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's television and it's a joke and afterwards we all get together. But we have also have a responsibility, I think now, is the way be the world becomes more fragile. 
I'm, I'm being a lot more careful <laughs> with the words I use gotcha. the next season. Yeah, because because you know the internet just wants to they want to do it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I've said stuff on the show, and I'm like, hmm, I wonder. Like I said, like I made the reference to the plant. I'm like, do I have to talk about skin color or religion, or can I just clown you for you being a clown and make the joke even better?